Please explain the attitude of prayer. I tried to explain to, our, to us, to ourselves here, that it is possible to do more than one thing at the same time. We shouldn't think, how can I be in an attitude of prayer and attend to my work? I have very heavy responsibilities. How can I do both things? It is possible to do both things, otherwise he wouldn't have said it. He didn't say all the time. There is a time that we cannot be in an attitude of prayer. When I have my shower, I, I can't exactly be in an attitude of prayer. When I have to do other things to do, he doesn't say all the time. He leaves it flexible. But he says it should be more than 50%. should <laughs> most of the time. He leaves it to you to decide whether you want to be 50.1% or you want to be 90%. He leaves that the decision to you. But it should be most of the time. So now, you know, science has proven that telepathy exists. Telepathy is communication between two individuals without the use of words, without the use of uh, signs, without uh, by com sending a communication on, on your computer, an email through your computer, or a telephone call. So without these physical means of communication, science has proven that it is possible for two individuals, for example, to have telepathy, communication. I have experienced it quite often. I'm sure you have experienced it. For example, my wife and I had a very close relationship. As I told you, my married life extends over 65 years. How many times this has happened? A thought comes to me, and immediately, before I say it, Violet is saying it. The same thought. This is telepathy. This exists. So our minds have powers, mental powers. We have many psychologists maybe amongst us in this, in this group. Psychology has proven that this is possible. When Shoghi Effendi was asked about telepathy, he said this is a matter for psychology to investigate and to explain. It's a psychological thing. It exists. No physical communication of any kind. Mental communication. If you like, call it spiritual communication. Not physical. So when we think about that, we realize that one can be in communication with our beloved, our most beloved, our well-beloved, Baha'u'llah. We can be in communication with Abdul Baha, through Abdul Baha with Baha'u'llah. So this thing exists. So why isn't it possible for me as a Baha'i to have communication with my beloved? And he says, in his writings over and over again. I am near you. You are far. I am near you. There are prayers on this point that we draw ourselves away from God. He is right there. We shut ourselves out, but he's right there. We can be in communication with him. He loves us. He wants to help us. His strength is there. His wisdom is there. His power is there. And I have to be able to draw on this myself and not be far myself, draw myself away from him, get closer to him. And that's what I think is the prayerful attitude, to realize that he sees me, yeah. He exists and he loves me, yeah. He's near me. He wants to be closer even to me. He wants me to turn to him, to have communication with him. To be in an attitude of prayer is this desire 
this effort to be closer to him, to be aware that I am in his presence. I'm not shut out. No, I am in his presence. He sees me. We have to get into this mental, this spiritual condition. And it is not impossible. It is necessary.